Well, hey there, nerds. Ah, furry jump scare, I know, I know. So you guys might notice I'm on a disgusting Windows virtual machine right now solely because most people use Windows and that's what they're gonna be familiar with and I wanna just give the general tutorial on what will apply to most people. Anyway, anyway, today I wanted to show you guys how to set up OBS for recording and streaming and I guess to word it more directly, how to get the best video quality for your streams or recorded content. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is open up your browser, go on over to obsproject.com and grab the installer for what operating system you're using. Today we're using Windows, so we'd click that. If you're using Linux, please go through your package manager and love yourself. We're better than this, you know that. Mac OS, I don't know, you guys are lost. I don't know what the hell you people are doing. So, once OBS is installed and we open it for the first time, it's going to have like a little window that pops up once we open it, and it's gonna say, hey, do you wanna do a first time auto configuration setup? We can honestly just ignore that for the time being, and if you ever actually need to run it, you can go up to tools, and press auto configuration wizard and it'll do the same thing. But to get back on track here, the most important settings we'll need to fiddle with is our encoder and our bitrate. So the first thing we're going to need to do is click on settings. And from here, we'll go to output and way up here at the top, you're going to see a little thing that says output mode. Do yourself a huge, 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 huge favor and set this to advanced. This will allow you to see all the options available to you. And now that we got that sorted out, let's work on a streaming encoder and bitrate. I hear a lot of you asking, what is a video encoder? Great question. In simple terms, a video encoder takes your raw video file, which is massive and very hard to run, and compresses it in a way that allows it to be played back more easily and with a much lower file size. Think of it like zipping a file, but with video. Anyway, if you are streaming on YouTube, not Twitch, for the time being at least, you can use an amazing encoder called AV1. It's open source and I believe it'll eventually become the standard we all come to use. Now to use AV1, you're going to need an NVIDIA 4000 series graphics card or higher, one of those really fucking Chad Pog Intel art cards, or an AMD 7000 series GPU or higher. Now you might ask, why should I use AV1 over H.264? Better question, what is H.264? H.264 is a really, really old, inefficient encoder, and it's what Twitch tends to use. In the nicest way possible, H.264 looks like absolute festering ass cheeks at lower bit rates. And since you're streaming, you're most likely going to be restricted to lower bit rates due to your internet bandwidth. An AV1 file will look a gazillion times better than an H.264 video at the same bit rate. Now for those of us streaming to Twitch, or if you don't have a newer GPU, we don't get the joys of using AV1 for the time being, so we have to use H.264. However, if you use a hardware accelerated encoder, we can see much better quality as opposed to just using your CPU for encoding H.264. Now for the majority of you guys, you're going to want to use NVENC if you have an NVIDIA card, which is NVIDIA's encoder, or AMD HW for AMD. Uh, I don't have an Intel GPU in this virtual machine, but the encoder they use is called QuickSync. You're gonna want to use those hard were encoded ones as opposed to CPU because it's much more efficient. It was designed to do this. Use that shit because you paid for it, okay? And once you get that encoder all sorted out, let's move on to our other biggest setting, bitrate. In extremely oversimplified terminology, bitrate controls the quality of your content per second. So higher bitrate equals higher quality. However, it also means higher CPU or GPU costs and way higher disk space used. For that reason, streaming platforms put limits on how high of a bitrate you can use. And it's also limited by the upload speed of your internet. Uh, if you're American, you know our internet's fucking horrible. So if your internet speed is garbage, then things like NVENC or AV1 is going to save your ass. I believe Twitch caps your bitrate at around 6,000 kilobits per second, so doing anything higher than that is honestly just a waste of resources unless you're partnered with them. And here's Twitch's official recommendations for all their bitrates. But if we aren't streaming, we can use any encoder we want and any bitrate we want. So click on the recording tab up here and woo, don't some of these settings look familiar to you? There's a few different settings, so I'll try to explain them a bit. Uh, recording format is a big, big one. I personally use MKV because it allows you to have separate audio tracks, which is a huge thing for me. Uh, .mov does the same thing, I believe. So if possible, try using either one of those. However, do note that I edit my videos in DaVinci Resolve, which lovingly supports .mkv. I'm not really sure if Adobe ever added support for .mkv, so you might have to just use .mov if you're using like Premiere and After Effects and all that. 
Anyway, then we have our video encoders, and now for recording, we have the freedom to use any encoder available to us, which opens up a cool new option called H.265, which is kind of like AV1, but way more widely available. It's also not free and open source. It's also known as HEVC, which stands for High Efficiency Video Coding. If possible, use either H.265 or AV1. For rate control, you're going to almost always want this on a constant bitrate, which is also known as CBR. And for the bitrate itself, since I work in a resolution of 4K a lot, I love having an unnecessarily higher bitrate of 22,000 kilobits per second. For most things, you can get away with using anywhere from 8,000 to 12,000 kilobits per second, and your video is going to look just fine. For the preset I use, I tend to use slow just because it gives me a really good video quality as well as tuning with high quality. And when looking down here, I put on look ahead and adaptive quantization. And scrolling back up here, you'll notice that I have audio tracks 1 and 2 enabled. Uh, I'll quickly touch on that, I suppose. Oh, but um, real quick, let's go over to the audio tab and over here you can set the bitrate for your audio. I like keeping mine at 320 kilobit per second just because, you know, it's probably the highest you can go on most platforms. Anyway, anyway, let's get back to talking about the, uh, the separation of these two little bad boys. So the first thing you'll want to do is apply the shit out of your damn settings or you're going to have to reset them over here. And then we can just close that out. And from the main part of OBS, we can click on one of our audio sources right above the mute button. Click here and go to advanced audio properties. In recordings and not streams, you can have, for example, your desktop audio separate from your mic's audio, which will let future you edit things way easier. You'll be able to edit your mic's volume and add effects completely separate from like your gameplay or desktop audio. Now it's worth noting, I'll say it again, this does not work when you are streaming. If you are streaming, you need to select both of these on the same track and make sure that track is selected when you are doing your whole streaming setup, all right? But for me, I do this. And one last thing to note here is this little mono checkbox. Mono just means one channel. So if you have one mic, please tick this box to mono. Otherwise, you'll hear things out of the left or right speaker only when you use your mic. So setting this to mono will fix that. And finally, let's get back into settings and then we'll click on video. And from here, we can make sure that we set our resolution to the correct one. I'm using 4K, so that's the 4K resolution. The output scaled resolution is what's actually going to be sent out to the recorded video or streamed video. And from here, you can just set your FPS. I use 60 FPS. And that's pretty much the basic rundown of what you need to know to get things looking and sounding good in OBS. If you ever wanted to support me for almost nothing in return because I suck at rewards, you can head over to my Patreon and empty your wallet at me. I'm joking, I'm kidding, don't actually empty your entire wallet, but it does help me out a lot. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Go and record something great. Bye.